The police? Already? How did you know? May we see the Bishop of Knightsbridge? Yes. Yes, of course. But come in. What has happened, Reverend? What? I... I don't know. It was last night, I think. I only just arrived, and I have made this macabre discovery. My God. How horrible. I haven't called anyone. How did you know that? Holmes! Look! The bishop, appallingly mutilated. How dreadful! Mutilated! And killed! He was such a good man. How could anyone be so brutal? Look at him. He is barely recognizable now. How could any of God's children be responsible for that? They were evidently unworthy children, Reverend. Now do please try to calm yourself and focus, because we will need your assistance. Do you have any idea as to the motive behind this? I haven't had time to do an inventory, but nothing appears to have been stolen. And anyway, His Excellency didn't own anything of great value. I don't know what else I can tell you. Note this down, please, Doctor. Doctor? But you aren't the police? No, Reverend. I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. We are here at the request of the Bishop. In that case, I must ask you to leave, and not to touch anything. I must get in touch with the authorities without further delay. Uh, Reverend, when the inspectors of Scotland Yard find themselves at a dead end, which they quite often do, I assure you, then they turn to me for help. If you will allow us to continue our investigation, then you shall have the answers to all of your questions. Out of the question! I don't even know you! I'm going to call the police, whether you like it or not. It would be better for everyone, Reverend, if you kept your temper. Watson, are you taking notes? This affair promises to be a complex one, therefore we must not overlook the slightest detail. Yes, Holmes, I am keeping a meticulous set of notes. I have created a very clever deduction board. One thing we can be sure of at the moment is that this crime was not for gain. The Reverend has informed us that nothing valuable was stolen, and indeed, it would seem that the Bishop had nothing of any worth to take. Very good, Watson. Do continue. Alright, so this is the deduction board. All of uh, the clues you pick up, you will end up here. And you'll begin to deduce uh, uh, what uh, conspired here. Or at any other case. So, so right here, you got one so far. Wealth. That's what you figure out so far. The bishop didn't own anything of value. Not even. So others will come up and fill it in. And at some point, uh, usually the second and third parts, or the conclusion, you'll, you'll have to choose which one you think is the correct uh, answer. And it's multiple choice, and it's really not that hard. Some of the um, options they give you are just absurd, and uh, shouldn't have any trouble figuring these out. So, let's continue on. Right, so... Investigation mode. Go in and uh, investigate on, uh, on all the clues here. Pick up anything, and uh, not all of them, of course, will be valid. I mean, some are just uh, random items, but it's all right. So, if uh, you don't want to get spoiled and want to skip to other parts of the video, uh, in the descriptions I put a scene selection usually, and uh, you could choose between uh, cut scenes, uh, answers to the puzzles, or just uh, plain commentary with when I'm investigating things. Alright, so let's continue on. This stove is filled to overflowing. It's like one of those isn't really not important. So let's in uh, investigate the body. Start with the feet. This poor man was tied just below the knees. To stop him from walking, certainly, but mostly to free his feet. His feet have been burned. Hmm. My first impression is that he wears a size 9 shoe. You? But what does it matter, Holmes? All right, so they probably use uh, the, the coal from the stove up there to do the torture of his feet. These burns are terrible. All right, so of course you can hit the sixth sense when you're in this mode too. Uh, we'll show you all of the important clues. Of course, uh, uh, where's the fun of that? And so, but you know, it is there if you need it for a last choice. 
or a last resort, to be more correct. A finger. Apparently, it doesn't belong to the Bishop of Knightsbridge. How dreadful! Very dreadful. I got some rope right over here. A piece of rope that was used to tie up that poor man. Yeah, that should be it for the legs. Let's head on up. Check out the waist area. Uh, his hands. The fingers have been crushed and violently struck. My God, Holmes, this man was horribly tortured. Right, so if you noticed, uh, when you have clicked on something, it will turn green instead of the blue. That means you've already uh, investigated it. And uh, he gives the same answers for when you click on either hand. So I'm not going to click it twice. His forearms have been ripped. Pieces of skin have been torn off. What do you think, Watson? I'd say that he was eaten alive. Yet I've noticed a curious degeneration of the skin tissue around the wounds. His stomach is covered in scratches. Quite evidently, they weren't made recently. So, these wounds were not made by his murderers. Right, so make the note of that. So, yeah, it's actually a good idea to listen to a lot of the stuff they said. At least try to remember them, because uh, it'll help with the deduction later. That's, uh, that's it for the lower body. It's up to the chest and the head. His chest has been lacerated, I would say, with a very sharp and fine blade. All right. You can see by his expression that he suffered terribly. His mouth is covered in blood, and I can make out strips of skin between his teeth. My dear friend, everything points to this man having gnawed at his own forearms. That's unbelievable, Holmes. All right, that's it for the torso. Something is missing here. Oh, yes? And what might that be? His shoes. Watson, his shoes are missing. Right, let's take a look around. It's just on the floor. A broken vial and blood near the neck. What a strange smell. Ooh, chemical components, I think. A broken bottle of whiskey. However, the Bishop of Knightsbridge was known for his sobriety. A bottle of whiskey. I can make out fingerprints stained with blood and dirt. It would seem that the brutes who tortured the bishop to death were intoxicated with alcohol. There is blood on this paperweight. This paperweight was used to crush the victim's fingers. All right, so that concludes this area for its all the clues. All right, let's head on to the safe. Let's take a look at the picture, if you like. The picture of Peregrine Maitland, commander of the infantry brigade of Her Majesty's Guards at Waterloo. The Bishop of Knightsbridge has the same name as his ancestor, an illustrious family. Not really that important, but, you know, it's nice to know. All right, you could check the safe. All right, so this is for a puzzle later. You really can't solve it right now, but uh, might as well look at the scratches right here, which is important. These traces reveal that the thieves tried to open this chest. Yeah, but they failed to get in, so remember that. Reverend, I'm missing something, an implement with which to open this chest. Could you tell me where to find it? No, go to the devil! What are you afraid of, Reverend? What is inside the chest? I'm not afraid of anything. In fact, I do have the necessary implements, but if I have to give them to anyone, it will be to a representative of the law and no one else. All right, back to the safe. I want to check under the safe now in the cabinet. A whip? No, it is a discipline for self-flagellation. It's a silice designed to bruise the person wearing it. The bishop wore it as repentance. This very pious man must have had the habit of mortifying his flesh as a means of repentance. No oh, Da Vinci Code stuff going on here. This metal rod is for fastening the chilies. Right, uh, I'm going to want to remember that rod later. Alright, so, right over here. 
This door has not been forced. Where does it lead, Reverend? To His Excellency's room. There is just a mattress and a stool. Okay, nothing of importance right now. But, um... You'll be going back there later. Closed. The veranda door hasn't been forced. Strange. Reverend, might I have the key? No! You have no authority here. Let me call the police. Perhaps we should listen to him, Holmes. Perhaps you should let me get on with this, Watson. Alright, can't get in there right now, so onto the table right here. Look, a bloody scalpel. A surgical scalpel covered in blood. There isn't any doubt the wounds on the bishop were administered with this scalpel. All right, so check out the floor over here. Watch where you're putting your feet, Watson. Have you noticed these prints upon the ground? Well, yes, those muddy marks. See here, Watson, footprints can often provide more vital information than the very best of informants. Yes, if you know how to make them talk, that is. It's child's play, Watson. We will begin by excluding the contaminating prints, which are yours and mine from where we came in, and those of our dear reverend who was so impatient to call the police. Alright, so the prints on the left are the prints, footprints coming in, and then the footprints on the right are the ones going leaving. So pull out the magnifying glass and have a look. Well-worn shoes with an odd pattern on the soles. Right. Check out the pebble. A fragment of stone. Peculiar. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. Okay, so hobnail boots. But this footprint seems different. This print came from an expensive pair of shoes, and it seems recent. It is not a laborer's shoe. All right, can you guess whose shoes were those? Right, so pull out the measuring tape. Size nine. Size nine and a half. Size nine. All right, so you got two size nines and a nine and a half. Size nine and a half. Size nine. Size nine. Okay, so one le one leaving, one of the size nines has a different shoe. Right, so time to solve the questions. Right, so when leaving, that obviously means you have the nine, one nine and a half still wearing the same shoe, and then you have the two size nines, but one of the size nines is wearing the uh, bishop shoes. So it's safe to conclude, though, if it's, uh, then it should be three. Of course, if you answer wrong, Sherlock Holmes will say it doesn't seem right, and uh, you, you could. Trial and error if you want here, but you know, it's more fun to do the investigatory work. Perfect. We now know that there were three crooks. Alright, on to question two. So you got some observed answers. What's the footprints reveal? See, all men left the room jumping on one leg? Yeah. It's just weird. Alright, but here, one man left the room wearing different shoes. That makes more sense than some of the other options. Strange, but true. One of the crooks was wearing a different pair of shoes when he left here. Therefore, we have three men who came in and left again. But one of them was wearing a different pair of shoes from the ones which he came in with. So, all we have to do is look for a workman who likes Italian shoes. 